Hi, hello, my dear YouTube friends. How are you doing? I hope you have a great Saturday. So today, it is another episode of my Mia's Fairy Tale Wild. The story today is short, but I hope you will enjoy it. This story is called The Bell Deep, and it takes place in Ulmse, which is the capital capital of the island Funin, which is in the middle of Denmark. And um, yeah, I hope you will like it. And uh, even though all the names and such is strange to you, this is Danish history, okay? So you learn a little bit about some of the tales that took place in the city where Hans Christian Andersen lived. So enjoy. The story is called The Bell Deep. Ding dong, ding dong. It sounds up from the bell deep in the Odense O. Every child in the old town of Odense on the island of Funen knows the O, which washes the gardens round about the town and flows on under the wooden bridges from the dam to the watermill. In the O grew the yellow water lilies and brown feathery reeds. The dark velvety flags grow here, high and thick, old and decayed willows, slanting and tattering, hang far out over the stream beside the monk's meadow, and by the bleaching ground, but up aside there are gardens upon gardens, each different from the rest, some with pretty flowers and boas like little dolls' pleasure grounds, often displaying cabbage and other kitchen plants. And here and there, the gardens cannot be seen at all, for the great elder trees that spread themselves out by the, hang, out by the bank and, ha and hang far out over the streaming waters, which are deeper here and there than the ore can fathom. Opposite the old nunnery is the deepest place, which is called the Bell Deep, and there dwells the old water spirit, the O-Man. The spirit sleeps through the day while the sun shines down upon the waters, but in starry and moonlit nights he shows himself. He is very old. Grandmother says that she has heard from her own grandmother. Uh, grandmother says that she has heard her own grandmother tell of him. He is said to lead a solitary life and to have nobody to whom he can converse save the great old church bell. Once the bell hung in the church tower, but now there is no trace left of the tower or of the church, which was called St. Albans. Ding, dong, ding, dong, sounded the bell when the tower still stood there. And one evening, while the sun was setting and the bell was swinging away bravely, it broke loose and came flying down through the air, the brilliant metal shining in the ruddy beam. Ding dong, ding dong, now I retire to rest, sang the bell, and flew down into the Unzu, where it is deepest, and that is why the place is called the Bell Deep. But the bell got neither rest nor sleep. Down in the old man's haunt, it sounds and rings, so that the tone sometimes peers upwards through the waters, and many people maintain that it strains for both the death of someone. But that is not true, for the bell is only talking with the old man, who is now no longer alone. And what is the bell telling? It is old, very old. As we have already observed, it was there long before grandmother's grandmother was born, and yet it is a child in comparison with the old man, who was quite an old quiet personage, an oddity, which is, which is hose of ed skin and his scaly jagged with the yellow lilies for buttons, and wreath of need in his hair, what wreath of reed in his hair and seaweed in his beard, but he looks very pretty for all of that. What did the bell tell us? To repeat it all would require, would require years and days, for year by year it is telling the old stories, sometimes short ones, sometimes long ones, according to its whim, 
It tells of old times, of the dark hard times, thus. In the church of St. Elvin, the monk had mounted up into the tower. He was young and handsome, but thoughtful exceedingly. He looked through the loophole, loophole out upon the oh, when the bed of waters was yet broad and the monk's meadow was still a lake. He looked out over it and over the rampant and over the nun's hill opposite, where the covent lay, and the light gleamed forth from the nun's cell. He had known the nun right well, and he had thought of her, and his heart beat quicker as he thought, ding-dong, ding-dong. Yes, this was the story of the bell, that this was the story the bell told. Into the tower came also the dapper manservant of the bishop, and when I, the bell, who am made of metal, rang hard and loud and swung to and fro, I might have beaten out his brains. He sat down close under me and played with two little stick sticks as if they had been a stringed instrument, and he sang to it. Now I may sing it out aloud. Through the other times I may not whisper it. I may sing of everything that is kept concealed behind locks and bars. Yonder it is cold and wet. The rats are eating here up alive, her up alive, nobody knows of it, nobody hears of it, not even now, for the bell is ringing and singing its loud ding-dong, ding-dong. There was a king in those days, they called him Canute, he bowed himself before the bishop and monk, but when he offered the free peasants with heavy taxes, offended the free peasants with heavy taxes and hard words, they seized their weapons and put him to flight like a wild beast. He sought shelter in the church and shut gate and door behind him. The violent band surrounded the church. I heard tell of it. The crows, ravens, and magpies started up in the terror, started up in terror at the yelling and shouting that sounded around. They flew into the tower and out again. They looked down upon the throng below, and they also looked into the windows of the church and screamed out aloud what they saw there. King Canute knelt before the altar in prayer. His brothers Eric and Benedict stood by him as a guard with drawn swords, but the king's servant, the treasurer's Blake, betrayed his master. The throng in front of the church knew where they could hit the king and one of them flung a stone through the pane of glass, and the king lay there, dead. The cries and screams of the savage horde and of the birds sounded through the air, and I joined in also, for I sang ding-dong, ding-dong. The church bell rang. The church bell hangs high and looks far around and sees the birds around it and understands the language the wind roars upon it through windows and loopholes, and the wind knows everything, for he gets it from the air, which encircles all things, and the church bell understands his tongue and rings it out into the world. Ding dong, ding dong. But it was too much for me to hear and to know. I was not able any more, any longer to ring it out. I became so tired so heavy that the beam broke and I flew out into the gleaming O, where the water is deepest and where the old man lives, solitary and alone, and year by year I tell him what I have heard and what I know. Ding dong, ding dong. Thus it sounds complainingly out of the bell deep in the old O. That is what grandmother told us. But the schoolmaster says that there was not any bell that rung down there, uh, for that it could not do so, and that the old man dwelt yonder, for there was no way, old man at all. And when all the other church bells are sounding sweetly, he says that it is not really the bells that are sounding, but that it is the air itself which sends forth the notes, and grandmother said to us that the bell itself said, it was the heir who told it to him. Consequently, there are 
They are agreed on that point, and this much is sure. Be cautious, cautious, and take good heed of thyselves, they both say. The air knows everything. It is around us. It is in us. It talks of our thoughts and of our deeds, and it speaks longer of them than does the bell down in the deepest of the Ulmse O, where the old man dwells. It rings it out in the vault of heavens, far, far out, for ever and ever, till the heaven bells sound. Ding dong, ding dong. The end. Yeah, this is a short story, and I rather liked it, and I like the morale. But I would like if you would write down below what you think the morale of this story is, and if you liked it at all. Um, and I'll be back with another fairy tale next Saturday. So I wish you a great weekend, and I hope to see you tomorrow in my live. And um, yeah, it is always a lot of fun, and if you can't be in my live, well, then I have a women chat on Tuesday. Hopefully you will listen to that one. Who knows what I have to tell. I am. I have been to a fiber fest today, a fiber festival, and I will surely tell you all about it on Tuesday. And who knows, maybe a little about it also tomorrow. But don't forget, give this video a like before you head out. And if you're new here, yay, I'm happy to see you. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel down below and next to the subscribe button you see a little bell ding it like the bell we just heard about and you'll be notified whenever i put up new content and uh, yeah i would love if you would comment down below and until next time see you all bye i love you all bye